Hi guys, it is another gloomy day here in the end times in paradise here on Monday morning, May 30th, 2016. So Monday morning is when I bring you my weekly my weekly economic meltdown roundup rant where I go on the pages of the mainstream media to see how the global industrial economy led by big oil has taken down this planet. And before I get into Yahoo News' business page uh, this week, we're going to check in with my old buddy Noam Chomsky. What is Noam Chomsky talking about this week on the old lefty on democracy now? Uh, you know, the, the biggest story by far on the business page uh, is cheering on Donald Trump for rolling out the red carpet to the planet eaters in his new great uh, energy vision for this country. I've had several rants, you know my opinion of it, but let's hear what Noam, this old man, you gotta give Noam, how old is this fucker? He must have been in his 90s by now. Uh, in this video, Chomsky on Trump's climate denialism. He wants us to march toward the destruction of the species, meaning our species and every other species. Uh, I hope you're going to be able to hear this. You know, poor Gnome, he can barely even talk anymore. But give us your opinion of... Donald Trump's energy plan, Mr. Chomsky. So, Trump is saying, you know, let's, let's make the, the uh, global warming problem as dangerous and imminent as possible. Let's march towards destruction of the species like we're destroying everyone else. Uh, and let's uh, escalate militarization and at the same time sharply cut down resources by radical tax cuts, mostly for the rich, which means essentially eliminate pretty much the rest of the government. Incidentally, in that position, he's not very different from Paul Ryan, who's considered the intellectual on the Republican side. This is a really astonishing moment in human history, if you look at it. An astonishing moment in human history, if you look at it so we're gonna go from as long as i have my camera here on the computer let's go from noam chomsky to militant uh militants in sub-saharan africa as your old eco nazi absolutely loving this story militants blow up Shell and Agip pipelines in Nigeria. And then I guess a day later, we have militants attack ENI pipeline in Nigeria's Delta. So what's going on over there in Nigeria for, uh, for the eco-Nazis to cheer on? <clears throat> Militants blew up strategic gas and crude pipelines belonging to Shell and Agip on Saturday in an increasingly fierce campaign that has chopped Nigeria's oil production in half, militants and residents said. This is a new militant group calling itself the Niger Delta Avengers reported in social media that they had dynamited the trunk line linking the Dutch British shell companies Bonnie terminal and the export terminal of the Italian company a gip there you go uh, you go guys you go Nigeria's oil production had already fallen from a projected 2.2 million barrels a day to 1.4 million barrels before the latest attacks on the oil industry in southern Nigeria, including three within the past week on facilities of the U.S. oil major Chevron. And several companies 
have evacuated their workers. And the Niger Delta Avengers <clears throat> has given the oil companies a May 31st deadline tomorrow to leave Nigeria's southern oil producing Niger Delta. Quoting uh, the Avengers, watch out, something big is about to happen and it will shock the whole world. There you go. Here's my uh, Noam Chomsky and, and this guy. Here, here's uh, <laughs> here's Hambone's newest Humpty Dumpty tribe hero. That guy. Now, get now, guys. Uh, but just just so you understand, I, I've I've had this rant before, usually coming out of out of South America, but it works for Sub-Saharan Africa as well. Uh, anybody who thinks that these guy, these Niger Delta Avengers are some sort of eco-Nazi trying to protect the environment of, uh, of their homeland got one thing to tell you. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. What these guys and like, and like so many of these Amazon Indians uh, arming themselves with spears over there in South America is, well, there, there's a few of them that probably are eco-Nazis, but, but the vast majority of these guys, what they're demanding, and rightfully so, is a bigger piece of the pie from these cheap sons of bitching, bitch planet eaters. They're not saying they want the oil companies out of Nigeria. They're saying they want these cheap ass sons of bitches to turn over a bigger piece of the oil money pie. It's all about the oil. It has nothing to do with, with the environment uh, of Nigeria. Now, when there were some eco-Nazis there in, in Nigeria, when was it? About 20 years ago, uh, giving Shell some flack. Uh, they were met, that guy, what was his name? One of my Humpty Dumpty Drive heroes, can't remember his name. The Nigerian government executed that eco-Nazi uh, for, for dare uh, complaining about Shell Oil Company, where the Nigerian government uh, killing its own citizens trying to protect the environment of Nigeria and getting in Shell's way. Uh, I did get a sick laugh uh, on this latest story. Um, the military, the, the Nigerian military has moved more troops into the Delta to, to protect the oil companies. That's what they're talking about here. And, and I absolutely love this. So British Foreign Minister... Philip Hammond this month cautioned President Buhari that he, meaning the Nigerian president, needed to deal with poverty and anger over pollution from oil spills in the region. Yes, he needed to deal with it. Anyway, from Nigeria... I guess this is the whole planet, and I uh, just loved this story from Forbes magazine a couple of days ago. The world's largest oil and gas companies, 2016, Exxon is still king, and I'm 99% sure I recall reading in the past in the past week. Don't quote me on this. I I believe. I recall reading that it is Exxon Mobil uh, stock up like 15 percent 
uh, this year that Exxon Mobil is the number one best performing stock uh, of 2016. So what does Forbes magazine have to say? Exxon is still king. This past year hasn't been kind to oil and gas companies. No shit, Sherlock. However, the titans of energy are still standing tall even as their businesses are pressured. Exxon Mobil remains the world's largest oil company and number nine on Forbes' global 2000 list of the world's biggest and most powerful public companies as measured by a composite score of revenue profits, assets, and market value. China's state-controlled oil company PetroChina is the second largest on our list and Chevron coming in at number three. There's certainly still enough, more, more than enough oil to go around. Members of OPEC pumped 31 and a half million barrels per day in 2015. Uh, and it's still a massive business after all as the top 25 oil and gas companies raked in 2.6 trillion dollars in sales uh, during 2015 and pocketed 81 billion dollars in profit. There you go. Good for Exxon Mobil. Not looking so good for Shell as Shell's job losses now equal Facebook's entire payroll. Royal Dutch Shell announced that it would eliminate another 2,200 positions, which means that its total job losses is roughly equivalent to the entire payroll of the tech giant Facebook. By the end of 2016, Shell will have slashed 12,500 positions, a staggering toll for one company. There you go. So we do, it's not all doom and gloom today, going hand in hand with that. What is the U.S. oil rig count? Uh, it is flat for the week. I think down two more, uh, down two more rigs. I think we got, we have about 400. I, I've heard two views. One, one count says 388. Another count says 405. So depending on how you count your oil rigs, let's call it 400 oil rigs going on in the, in the, uh, in the country. But of course, the fall in oil rigs is compensated by the, the turnaround in the fracking gas rigs. And uh, I, I don't know how many dots we have in this story. What is going on in Texas? The good old state of Texas this week. We see Chinese company makes a splash in Texas shale. This is Chinese conglomerate Yantai Jinchao has one billion dollars to blow and it is looking to buy oil producing assets in the Permian Basin as it moves aggressively to expand its Texas oil portfolio at a time of slumping oil prices and good deals. The company already has two oil fields in Texas, which it bought last year for $1.3 billion. I, I love the name of this Chinese Planet Eaters 
U.S. subsidiary, gotta love the name, Blue Whale Energy. Blue Whale Energy is following an aggressive growth path focusing on building a strong oil and gas portfolio in the U.S., but it's not just seeking participation in oil fields. Blue Whale wants to be the operator of the fields it buys, which will give it, meaning China, the final word in matters such as drilling depth and exploitation intensity. There you go. Uh, that's what's going on in Texas. What is going on in Colorado as we see Colorado is home to the best value fracking wells. So if you're looking to make money in fracking, Colorado is your bet. This is the denver Julesburg Basin in Colorado host the, mer the most commercial or low-cost frack log, frack log in the United States. A large number of incomplete wells have piled up uh, out there. Uh, in Colorado as these oil prices has plummeted. But uh, don't worry, Wall Street Daily has reported when oil solidly hits $50 a barrel, a portion of 4,000 frack-logged wells could go online in a matter of months. According to Bloomberg, if 170 wells a month begin producing oil, a fresh supply of 500,000 barrels of oil per day would enter international markets, potentially causing, voila, another price drop. Imagine... It was, of course, the, uh, the fracking oil wells that started the, this whole collapse of oil prices. Speaking of what, what is going on today in the oil market, from five hours ago from Reuters News, oil prices dip as Iraq raises exports. Oil prices dipped to around $49 a barrel Monday morning as Iraq raised its crude exports target while Canadian production was set to restart after huge wildfires. There you go. So, uh... Iraq, how much are they getting ready to put in? And I can't see it somewhere. I remember seeing five billion. Yeah. Uh, Iraq was the latest Middle East producer to raise its export quota ahead of OPEC's meeting in a few days, supplying five million barrels of extra crude to its partners and meanwhile uh, as expected uh, a rise in Canadian oil sands production as the planet eaters pour back into Canada to crank up on uh, crank up the oil sands operation bringing on another million barrels per day. Yep, yep, yep. From Iraq to Canada to Colorado to Texas. But anyway, enough of big oil. Well, I guess you can't have plastic without big oil. What is going on in Egypt today? 
where you see the IFC invest in Egypt petrochemicals as part of a $2 billion push. This is the World Bank's International Finance Corporation will invest $25 million in Egypt's hilariously named Carbon Holdings. Carbon Holdings, a petrochemical producer as part of the World Bank's plans to commit $2 billion of investment in Egypt. There you go. Carbon Holdings is seeking financing to build a petrochemical complex that will lessen Egypt's dependence on imports for products used in industry and to make plastics. The company plans to complete financing this year for the seven billion dollar petrochemical complex on the Gulf of Suez. Uh, the complex hopes to start operating in 2021 and hopes to process four million metric tons of naphtha per year to make polyethylene, polypropylene, and other chemicals as Carbon Holdings is seeking about $5 billion from lenders in the U.S., U.K., and Italy for the complex. Good for the planet eaters in Ethiopia, from Ethiopia to Mozambique, as we see Sassol boost Mozambique gas processing as regional demand grows. Sassol Limited plans to increase the capacity of its processing facility in Mozambique amid strong regional demand for the southern African nation's gas. Quote, there is no shortage of demand. This is Planet Eater John Shishinga, Senior Vice President of Sassol's Exploration and Production Unit. Quote, there is a power pool and all the countries of the region are short of power. Hmm. We are they're due to engage with authorities on exploration and production contracts this year. Mm -hmm -hmm. But we will wrap up uh, our, uh, our economic meltdown roundup rant uh, in China. You know, all of this shit, uh, this unadulted horse shit about the Chinese economy. What does Bloomberg have to say about uh, the Chinese economy and, and this light-hearted story? Mickey Mouse helps China buck economic doom and gloom. China's slowing economy is not putting the brakes on tourism. Shanghai Disneyland attracted almost one million visitors to its public areas weeks before the five and a half billion dollar theme park even opens officially on June 16th. And tourism spending is likely to triple by 2020 after industry investment jumped 42% last year. This is one of these, uh, this is Sean Ryan, one of these Chinese market analysts. Quote, the Chinese consumer is spending more and more. According to Sean Ryan, who 
feels that Walt Disney Company is underestimating demand from the 330 million people estimated to live within three hours of the new Disney park. Quote, every person with a kid or grandkid in China is going to go to Shanghai Disney as long is, as it is big enough and good enough, close quote, and, and all of these other, uh, all of these other theme park operators, you know, Six Flags hopping on the board, and, and all of these, these, these developers in uh, China taking advantage of these clueless morons helping them to separate uh, themselves from their money. And what's going on with Chinese air traffic? Last year's, last year's 829 million domestic airline passengers was up 45% from four years earlier. While the that was a domestic, while the 86 million international flights saw a 74% jump. Boeing sees China demand generating almost $1 trillion in orders for 6,330 new airplanes. That's what uh, is going on in the air and what is going on in the sea. Well, other than World War III ramping up in the South China Sea, sailing around with all the warships, you have, guess what? The still new cruise industry is spurring operators to relocate more cruise ships to China. Carnival Corporation, the world's biggest clueless moron cruise operator, says its best growth is in China. Quote, we feel really, really bullish in China. One of these planet eaters said, we're still at the very beginning. We are still at the very beginning. But I'm going to close this rant, this Memorial Day rant, with a nod to uh, Harambe the gorilla gunned down in the Cincinnati Zoo. On Saturday, as long as we're talking about clueless morons, but I'm going to have my own rant, my own Memorial Day rant about Harambe the gorilla. But for this week's Memorial Day edition of my clueless, I'm sorry, my economic meltdown roundup rant, bye guys.